Isn't it wonderful? Every feast of Rosh Hashanah, Jewish families are coming together around the table. The table is filled with delicious food, which is actually one of the symbolic of this feast, the food. Honey and apples, so our year will be sweet. This feast is full of interesting traditions. Do we actually need to eat this? Yes, the head of the household should eat it, so you know what? Give me that. Yes, this is how the Jewish people celebrate their feast, but this feast is for you as well. Well, it's not just a Jewish feast, but it's a feast of the Lord. And everything started in the desert. It's amazing, but given commandments to Israel, God also gave feasts to Israel. And uh, one of the mysterious feasts, it's actually a feast of trumpets. Why it is mysterious? Because Bible doesn't explain itself why you should celebrate Feast of Trumpets and to understand why we need to actually go to the desert. And right now we are in the desert and read the Bible and think what did they experience? What people of Israel experienced in the desert? So uh, Leviticus 23 verse 23 says, Then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak to the children of Israel saying, In the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall have a Shabbat rest a memorial of blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. And then he speaks no explanation, just speaks about sacrifice, day off, and other details we're going to cover later. So actually, Bible called the Feast of Trumpets and telling them all you need to know and all you need to do, it's actually memorial of blowing of trumpets. Memorial of blowing of trumpets. To remember blowing of trumpets. Zichron Trua in Hebrew we say, Zichron Trua. What does it mean really? And the answer is in the Bible, in another book, Book of Exodus. So let's go to Book of Exodus and see what happened to Israel prior to that and why such an interesting kind of secret for us today message become very clear to people of Israel. Let's open Book of Exodus and go to the events uh, prior to the giving of commandment to the Mount of Sinai, Exodus 19 says, verse 16, then it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunderings and lightnings and thick cloud on the mountain and the sound of the shofar. Hebrew says shofar, not the trumpet, but shofar, the horn. Sound of the horn was very loud so that all the people who were in the camp trembled. Verse 17, 18 says about fire and smoke. God came down on the Mount of Sinai. People have seen smoke and fire. It was like a volcanic eruption, but there were no volcanic eruption. It was just glory of God and Mount started to, start to melt in the presence of the Lord. It was amazing, dramatic scene. No one ever have seen such a scene and no one ever will see it uh, again. So verse 19 says, and when the blast of the shofar in English trumpet, blast of the shofar sounded long and become louder and louder. Can you remember that was just blast of shofar? It was long, very long. It was louder and louder. Moses spoke and God answered him by voice. That's the dramatic event happened right before God giving feasts to people of Israel. And as we remember, first feast was about, about Exodus from Egypt. Second about Pentecost, the feast of harvest. It was pointing into the future. When you go to the land, you will have harvest and God preparing them for harvest. And then he says, kind of out of blue, without giving any context, he telling them, I give you a feast that called remembrance of the Shofar, Kol Shofar, actually in Hebrew we say Kol Shofar, the voice of the Shofar. So we can guess and we can think, but for Israelites were clear. They need to remember what they have just experienced in the desert a few weeks before. And you know, I described this event, it was so dramatic, so powerful, so glorious. No one would ever forget this event. And uh, they knew God is speaking about to remember the blast, to remember the sound, to remember all the heavenly trumpets. Because who did the blast of the trumpet? Not the people. It's either God himself or angels. And it says they heard Brakim and Ramim, the voices and, and, and lightnings and, and, and voices actually. One of, the, one of the things they heard, voices. Let's go to Numbers and read second description of the Feast of Trumpets. It's Numbers 29 verse 1 says, 
and in the seventh month, the first day of the month, you shall have a holy convocation, you shall do no customary work. For you it is a day of blowing the shofar, blowing the shofar, blowing the trumpets. That's it. First time we see remembrance of blowing of trumpets, and second, just blow the trumpets. It's an amazing feast, but God said, just blow the shofar, blow the shofar, remember the shofar you have heard before. And for, for Israelites, it was clear. We need to remember what happened in the desert on the Mount of Sinai when God was giving commandments, and now He's giving us a feast to remember. It's a powerful feast because speaking about past, what God have done, all the glorious events and glory and fire and the tenderings and lightning and God's voice and voice of angels. In that atmosphere, we have received the word of God. And now prophetic message of this feast, it's a future because Jesus is coming back and he's coming back with the sound of trumpet. It says in it's Thessalonians, it says in Corinthians, it says in the book of Revelation, he's going to come with the loud sound of trumpet. Trumpets. It says in Matthew and Lucas, he's going to come with the sound of trumpets. So every time we celebrate Feast of Trumpets, we remember what God has done in the past. We think of what He's doing for us today. What does His voice speak to me today? What does His voice speak to you today? And we celebrate it and proclaim a glorious future because Jesus is coming back with the archangels and angels with the sound of trumpets, with His glory on the cloud again, as they have seen clouds on Mount Sinai. We're going to see Jesus coming back in the clouds. That's what the, the Feast of Trumpets stands for. Praise the Lord. So why shofar, a horn, and not a trumpet? You know, the, this feast represents the voice of God. When God is speaking, things change. When God is speaking, power comes. So there is place for trumpets, and there is many trumpets in the Bible, but most of the time in Hebrew Bible it says shofar. And shofar, actually, it's a horn. The horn that grow up on the head of animal. So this is not man's creation, this is God's creation. It's not made by God as trumpet, but it's God's creation. The shofar represents voice of God, voice of the Lord. And people of Israel, when they heard the heavenly, it says shofar. They knew the difference between trumpet, we say hatsutsra in Hebrew, between trumpets and shofar. So every time when I hear shofar, when people of Israel and Jewish communities around the world are going to blow the trumpets and make the sound, we remember God is speaking also today. God still speaks through the Bible. God speaks, still speaks through His voice to our lives, through the Holy Spirit to our hearts. So we remember the voice of God. Feast of Trumpet is a very important feast for Israel. We call them Rosh Hashanah, but really Feast of Trumpet. But why it's important for Christians? For Israel, it's clear God gave to Israel, and Israel is still faithful uh, through the thousands of years to celebrate this feast. But why for Christians? Because it's not the end, it's not only feast of the past. If it is a prophetic feasts that teaches us about future, about future events we have in the New Testament, we have in the book of Revelation, we have in, the, in Matthew, in the words of Jesus and other Gospels. So we're proclaiming return of Jesus Christ. As people of Israel preparing for the feast, cleaning their homes, preparing their souls, going to pray, uh, to be ready for the feasts, every Christian celebrate feasts of the, of the Lord by preparing our hearts to meet the Lord, to walk with the Lord, to walk in His glory, to hear the sound of His voice in our lives and be transformed by His Word. So, from the Israeli desert, next to the cities, I pray blessings over you and may God will visit you during the feasts, speak to you, teaches you, release His heavenly blessings because that's what we see in Israel during the feasts. Lots, lots of blessings and lots of joy coming down. And I pray that the joy of the Lord will come to your life, your family, and you will see a growing blessings in your life. Well, now you can join us to celebrate Feast of the Lord. Wishing you all a sweet year. But most important thing is to remember the voice of God. Oh,